Intel and AMD are in a fierce battle for semiconductor supremacy. Their processors have been competing for decades to be in high-end PCs and data centers all around the world. Oh, you already knew that? Well, what you may not know is that they're also in a heated battle in a few other markets as well. So in this episode, I'll show you some of those markets and explain how a couple of AMD's huge recent acquisitions could deal another set of serious blows to Intel, ones that most people may not see coming. Let's start with Tesla. Yes, Tesla. Late last year, infotainment systems for the Tesla Model 3 and Y switched from Intel's Atom CPUs to AMD's Ryzen APUs, or Accelerated Processing Units. An APU is basically a CPU with an integrated GPU, and in a Tesla, these hybrid chips are responsible for running the infotainment system that really sits at the heart of the passenger experience. Tesla's infotainment systems have to do a lot of different things, ranging from rendering maps and travel routes to displaying what the cameras and autopilot software are seeing at any given point, all the way to playing videos on YouTube or video games from the Tesla Arcade. Earlier this year, Tesla enthusiast Bjorn Nieland made a great comparison video highlighting the performance differences between Tesla's infotainment systems with the old Intel Atom CPUs and the new AMD Ryzen APUs. The AMD chip really shines during heavier workloads, from rendering maps and 3D visuals to watching videos in a browser or directly from YouTube. Now, I know what you might be thinking. This isn't really a fair comparison because Intel's Atom chip is a standard processor, while AMD's APU is a hybrid CPU and GPU. So of course it's going to be better for these graphically heavy applications. But that's exactly the point. These kinds of hybrid architectures and semi-custom chip designs are exactly how AMD ends up in systems like Tesla's, Xbox's, Playstation's, and so on. All right, with all that context, let's talk about two of AMD's most recent acquisitions and how they enable these kinds of hybrid architectures. Architectures that could give AMD the same kind of edge in other kinds of markets. First up is AMD's acquisition of Xilinx. This was an all-stock deal worth around $35 billion when it was announced in 2020, but it's now worth up to $50 billion thanks to AMD's rising stock price. For reference, that's almost 10 times more than what AMD bought ATI for back in 2006. Xilinx is a leader in the development of field programmable gate arrays, or FPGAs, as well as programmable systems on chips. Field programmable just means that you can change what the chip does after it's built, as opposed to other kinds of chips like CPUs and GPUs, which are hardwired when they're manufactured. Xilinx has over a 60% market share for these kinds of chips, which are useful across a wide variety of industries today, ranging from cloud computing and communications to automotive and aerospace. That's because reprogrammable logic is becoming more and more appealing for applications that constantly update after a chip is made and installed. One such application is machine learning, where the model could go through many different changes, iterations, and optimizations over time. For example, Tesla's self-driving neural networks, as they get retrained or remove certain features, like when they remove their radar data processing. Because FPGAs can be reprogrammed and re-optimized as applications change, it's not uncommon to see them perform two, five, or even 10 times better than a CPU for certain functions, especially if that function can be highly parallelized. That's where FPGAs really shine. In addition to being able to process multiple data frames at once, they can run multiple processes on a single piece of data at a time. But in addition to processing one data frame many different ways in parallel, these chips can also do that for multiple data frames in parallel. For example, multiple frames coming in from multiple cameras every fraction of a second. But reprogrammable chips aren't just useful in edge computing because of sensor data. They're also becoming more attractive in data center applications. Since FPGAs can be reconfigured via code, a single FPGA can serve many different purposes in data centers, removing the need for a wide variety of different application-specific integrated circuits. One reprogrammable chip can switch between many very different kinds of workloads, such as machine learning, or networking, or even information security. So what AMD is doing is integrating AI functionality from the Xilinx FPGAs into their own Epic server microprocessors. Besides simplifying server architectures, another big benefit of integrating these things into one CPU package is lower power consumption. That's because the same chip would be able to handle a wide variety of workloads without having to constantly transfer data to and from different specialized chips. 
transferring data on and off chips takes a lot of power, and power consumption is a huge concern for data centers, not just because of the electricity and cooling costs, but also because of carbon neutrality requirements and goals for ESG. As much as 40% of data center power consumption is directly due to cooling these systems. So these AI-enhanced Xilinx chips could play a key role in AMD's goal of increasing the efficiency of their high-performance chips by a factor of 30x over the next four years, making them very attractive options in the data center market. So just like we saw with AMD's hybrid APUs in the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y, this power-efficient and flexible combination of CPUs and FPGAs could get AMD's chips into a lot more systems over the next few years, both at the edge and in data centers. So hopefully you can see the value of AMD acquiring Xilinx. Uh, you know, we built our um, sort of foundation, sort of the, the base AMD business on just, you know, thinking, you know, very carefully about what's going to happen in the industry over the next five years, right? So that's how we decided to uh, lean into data centers. That's the strength of the PC market, the strength of the gaming market. You know, what Xilinx brings is, you know, really very additive um, to the AMD model. So we really believe that together we can define the future of high performance computing. And that's what Xilinx is all about. Um, it's a fabulous company. I would say it's one of the best companies in the industry. Uh, first of all, we're both still very focused on the data center. So that's the number one priority um, of the company. Uh, but they bring, you know, a great, um, you know, communications, uh, you know, 5G um, capability. Uh, they also uh, bring, you know, as you said, automotive. Um, that's a market that we haven't been in, but that market needs um, our technology as well. Um, and so combined, we'll have, you know, a $110 billion TAM, uh, which is um, a lot of opportunity to go after. And, and the key is, you know, both companies are operating extremely well. I mean, uh, you know, Xilinx is the market leader. They've been growing market share. Uh, we have a very strong portfolio and we have also been growing market share. And you put two winning teams together and um, you really have uh, you know, one of the best teams in the industry. Xilinx will help AMD grow their total addressable market by offering new products for communications and automotive, while strengthening their position and profit margins in core markets like data centers. But like I said, transferring data on and off chips takes a lot of power, which is a huge cost for data center operators today. That's why AMD also spent another $1.9 billion to acquire a cloud startup called Pensando. Pensando focuses on building data processing units, or DPUs, that are used by companies like Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, and Goldman Sachs. Unlike the FPGAs I just discussed, DPUs are fixed processing units just like CPUs and GPUs. While CPUs focus on processing and delegating instructions, and GPUs focus on processing complex math operations in parallel, DPUs focus on workloads that are heavy on transferring data for applications like networking, data storage, and information security. These DPUs combine a programmable integrated circuit with standard ARM processing cores to make sure that the right data goes to the right place in a data center in the right format quickly and efficiently. This makes DPUs useful both in hyperscale environments and standard enterprise servers, as they directly chip away at those operating costs. So acquiring Pensando helps AMD in a couple different ways. First, it helps them directly compete in smart network interface controller markets and the DPU markets against companies like NVIDIA and, of course, Intel. But this technology could also be integrated directly into another line of AMD's CPUs, just like we saw with Xilinx's FPGAs and ATI's GPUs. Pensando's DPU technology could seriously improve the interconnects between chips, which means much denser compute platforms and much faster data transfer speeds. According to Glenn O'Donnell, who leads Forrester's data center and networking studies, improving these interconnects between chips would result in multiprocessor systems that blow the doors off of anything that exists today. The CPU, GPU, and DPU were all independently created to meet increasingly diverse and complicated computing needs, and data centers are the first place where DPUs are seeing serious adoption. But as devices produce more and more data, and as AI and machine learning applications become more mainstream, I don't think it's a stretch to say that smaller and more lightweight DPUs might make their way into our desktops, our laptops, and even our smartphones at some point in the future, either as standalone chips or as components in fully integrated systems. Hopefully this episode helped you understand a little more about the new capabilities and markets that AMD is diving into, thanks to their recent acquisitions of Xilinx and Pensando and what they could mean for the future of computing. So if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. But 
Intel isn't taking these acquisitions lying down, and their next line of chips for servers are integrating these kinds of specialized chips as well. So if you want to see who's really winning this CPU race, check out this episode next. Or if you want to see who's really winning the race for full self-driving, this episode is for you. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.